Hello everyone, this is James and welcome to Lectures. So today, we will be discussing about nebulization. So before going further, let us first understand the innervation in our lungs. Our lungs are innervated by both the sympathetic and the parasympathetic nervous system. The sympathetic innervation, which is our fight and flight, is through the beta receptors. We have two beta receptors, B1 and B2. Banana 1 and banana 2. Bananas in pajamas. Just kidding. B1 is found in the heart, increases the heart rate. B1 is also found in the kidneys, increases the blood pressure through the renin angiotensin aldosterone system. B2 is found in the lungs. It is also found in the uterus, in the bladder, and the smooth muscles of the GI tract. So what does B2 receptors do to the lungs? B2 receptors bronchodilates, open up the lungs. But while doing so, we might also be affecting the bladder. While opening up the lungs, we can also see an increase in the heart rate, even if we were giving a selective beta-2 agonist. Now let's talk about parasympathetic innervation. The parasympathetic innervation is through our muscarinic receptors. We have five, fantastic five. We have M1 found in the central nervous system, M2 found in the heart. As I said, they are the opposite. Para is the rest and digest, Sempa is the fight and flight. So if we say that B1 increases the heart rate, M2 decreases the heart rate. And then we have M3, which is found in the smooth muscles of the GI tract, in the bronchial tubes, in the, in the lungs, the bladder, and M3 also enervates the exocrine system for tear production and the bronchial gastric secretions. And we have M4 and M5, which are found in the CNS. And if you have two M's, M and M, then it becomes a chocolate. Just kidding. Or M and M. Please stand up. Please stand up. So what does M3 do to the lungs? Again, it's the opposite of B2. When we say B2 bronchodilates, M3 bronchoconstrict and increase bronchial secretions. So now we know the innervations. So when we talk about those nebulization, nebulizers, the idea, oh, that's how it works. So now let's talk about the nebulizers. We have albuterol, libalbuterol, they are brothers. And then we have epitropium or your atrovent, and atrovin is a cousin of albuterol. And we have butyrsenide, a friend. So what is albuterol? Albuterol is, a, is an agonist. It is a beta-2 agonist, meaning to say it enhances the effects of beta-2 stimulation, which is opening up, opening up the airways. It is a short-acting Beta-2 agonist, short-acting, not over-acting like me. So, it is indicated for acute asthma exacerbation. It is also indicated for exercise-induced bronchospasm because our butyrol relaxes the small muscles of the lungs and prevent bronchospasm. bronchospasm. So what are the side effects? Oh, by the way, albuterol is also an off-label indication for hyperkalemia because albuterol facilitates transfer of potassium from the extracellular back to inside the cells. So side effects, tachycardia, increased heart rate, tremors, anxiety, nervousness, and force hypokalemia. Now let's talk about epitropium. 
or the atrovent. They're actually given, given together. So, eprotropium is also a bronchodilator, but the mechanism of action is totally different from albuterol. While albuterol is an agonist, eprotropium is an antagonist. It is a short acting, not overacting, short acting muscarinic antagonist. We call it SAMA, short acting muscarinic antagonist. It opposes the action of muscarinic receptors, particularly M3. So M3 bronco causes bronchoconstriction. Epratropium will oppose that action and will induce bronchodilation. So they are both bronchodilation and it also facilitates secretion clearance. Okay? Secretion clearance. So what are the side effects of epratropium? The same with albuterol, tachycardia, right? Because M3, I'm sorry, M2, the muscarinic receptors, M2, decreases heart rate, but you are blocking that action, so you are, in a way, increasing the heart rate. So it's tachycardia, and then talking about, talking about uh, secretions, dry mouth because you are blocking the production of secretions saliva tears so atrovent is indicated for a copd and it also given for acute asthma is a salvation so now let's talk about the friend uh, budesonide Budesonide is an inhaled corticosteroids and its uh, mechanism of action is the suppression of inflammation. When the bronchial tubes are inflamed, there is a mucus reduction and there's also the, the, the narrowing of the airways. So budesonide will suppress um, mucus production and will prevent the bronchial tubes from narrowing. And talking about side effects, one of the important thing is the paradoxical bronchospasm. That's the most serious side effect. If you're giving budesonide to an asthma patient and the symptoms did not improve, so you have to stop the treatment because that patient is experiencing paradoxical bronchospasm. And then overall, when you talk about um, steroids, you, took, you, you think about bones, you think about um, infection because uh, steroids um, suppresses the immune system, suppresses inflammation, but it also suppresses the immune system. So what are the side effects if you are giving it uh, systematically? Systemic, uh, such as inhalation, so you might experience um, oropharyngeal infection, oral trash, or upper respiratory tract infection, uh, osteoporosis if you're doing it for so long, and um, stunted growth also for pediatrics because it's it's blocking the axis. It's a different topic too. It's blocking the axis from pituitary to to the bones to the growth to the growth hormone. And that's it for the for the nebulizers. And now uh, let's talk about the difference between the albuterol and leva albuterol. A patient came in, there was an order for albuterol atrovent. And then prior to the administration of the nebulizer, the heart rate was in the 70s. And then after administration, the heart rate went up to 120s, 130s. And then you're going to page, the provider. You know, like this, sometimes at work, we'll say, James, can you do? I said, what is that? Uh, playing the piano? 
when we to play a piano, it's actually witnessing, you know, wasting narcotics. So, so now your page provider, and I guess you always say the heart rate before the treatment was 70, now it's 120. Can we switch to Leva albuterol? Okay. Don't say Zofinex, because Zofinex is a brand name. Just when you say Dabhof, Dabhof is a brand name. You say nasoenteric. So from the nose to the small intestine, that's your Dabhof, indicated for patients who are high risk for aspiration. Your NGT is your nasogastric from your nose to your stomach. Oh, it's a flight of ideas, you know. So back to um, uh, liver albuterol. So the doc the provider will the doctor will change the order to liver albuterol. So what's the difference between albuterol and liver albuterol? It's in two letters. It's in letter R and letter S. Your albuterol, which is also called the racemic albuterol, is the equal part of mixture of your R and S enantiomers or isomers. So your albuterol has an R and has an S. So what is an R enantiomers? So R has greater affinity to your beta-2 receptors. It has an anti-inflammatory effect. And of course, it can cause bronchodilation. That is your R. Now your S, it has zero less affinity to your beta-2 receptors. And it causes hyper-responsiveness, which can cause the bronchioles to constrict. And then it has a no anti-inflammatory effect. So in other words, you have this active R, and then you have S, which at times opposes the action. So scientists were trying to isolate the R from the S, and then they were, they were able to isolate, successfully isolate the R from the S. And now we have a pure R arbuterol, which, they, which we know now as the leva albuterol. Okay. Leva albuterol. Um, it has less um, a transient tachycardia effect, but there are also studies that show that it's mostly on dose dependent. If you have your liver albuterol, you are giving it at a lower dose because it has higher affinity to your beta-2 receptors. Your liver albuterol, Zofinex, is 0.63 milligrams compared to um, 2.5 milligrams of your albuterol. But you say if it, you give the same dose, um, it still can cause tachycardia because you're still stimulating the, the brother, the beta one. And that is for today. If you enjoy this video, please click subscribe and please tell your friends and friends of your friends and friends of your friends and your friends to subscribe and watch the video. Bye!